In a turbulent period of history, a princess was born destined to face the horrors of the French Revolution. She had a happy childhood, but when the revolutionary forces invaded the golden halls of Versailles, all that happiness gave way to indescribable terror. Separated from her parents, she found herself captive in a world full of uncertainties and dangers. Amidst the darkness, Marie Therese fought to survive, facing loneliness, pain, and fear. In captivity, she waged a daily battle against the cruelty of the revolution, with the terror of being the next one to face the guillotine hanging over her. Nonetheless, she survived and was the only one from her family to do so. Her father, Louis XVI, her mother, Marie Antoinette, her brother, Louis XVII, and her aunt, Elizabeth, all met a tragic fate during the French Revolution. Today, you will learn a little more about what happened to this forgotten princess, whose life was shaped by the flames of the revolution. Subscribe to help my channel grow, so I can continue bringing you more stories. And if you've just arrived and are already enjoying it, welcome. Give the video a like and comment on what you thought of this story. I sincerely thank all of you who follow and enjoy my videos. Your birth was eagerly anticipated by the French people, and when it happened on December 19, 1778, bells rang in all the kingdom's churches to celebrate the arrival of the new Dauphin of France. However, your mother was on the verge of suffocation during childbirth because the room where she gave birth was overcrowded, as was customary for royalty, and lacked ventilation. Although the windows were later opened to allow fresh air in and try to revive the queen. She was a girl, who was named Marie Therese Charlotte. She was the first daughter of King Louis XVI and Queen Marie Antoinette of France. The princess's birth was a great disappointment to the people who had been waiting for an heir for seven years. However, for the monarchs, the birth of this girl brought great joy. When your mother regained consciousness, she cried and said, Poor little one, you are unwanted, but you will be no less loved by me. A son would have belonged to the state, you will belong to me. From her birth, she was always the subject of rumors that she wasn't the king's daughter but rather the result of an affair between her mother and Duke Coigny. Shortly after her birth, many servants and ladies were assigned exclusively to care for the princess, ensuring her well-being. Marie Antoinette had a special bond with the princess, dedicating all her unconditional love to her. Louis XVI also adored the little one, spoiling her and showing constant affection. Marie Therese's education was always supervised by her parents, and she was subject to strict control, which led her to rebel against her mother at times due to her strong temperament. The queen often invited the children of servants and poor children to share meals with her own children. Marie Therese would sit at the table with these children and thus truly understand the meaning of need and poverty. Her mother, Marie Antoinette, did not want the girl to grow up to become an arrogant and spoiled woman like Louis XVI's aunts, and she took her daughter to various charitable works. The queen wanted her children to be fully aware of the existence of poverty. On Christmas of 1784, the queen took some of the princess's toys and gave them to poor children, teaching her daughter the importance of sharing with those in need. Marie Therese had three other siblings, Louis Joseph, Louis Charles, and Sophia Helena Beatrice of France, with Madame Royale being the only surviving daughter of the kings from childhood. Marie Therese also had an adopted sister, Ernestina de Lambriquet, who served as her companion. She received a fine education, with drawing, dancing, piano, and harp teachers. She learned mathematics and sewing, Italian and English. Little Marie Therese's childhood was happy and peaceful most of the time, spent with her family at the Petit Trianon, a small palace located within the grounds of the Palace of Versailles. It was a more tranquil and familial environment, in touch with nature, where Marie Therese and her brother Louis Charles could play and enjoy the animals and gardens, wearing light clothes and separated from the heavy and artificial atmosphere of the Versailles court. Undoubtedly, the girl's early years were idyllic, and she grew up to be an obedient and respectful child. She was physically beautiful, inheriting her mother's good looks. However, those were times of great political change. As Marie Therese grew older, 
a revolutionary sentiment was also growing. A dark and relentless destiny was approaching. The march towards the French Revolution was not only inevitable but gaining strength with overwhelming intensity. The air was filled with social dissatisfaction, fueled by a suffocating budget deficit that weighed heavily on the hungry masses. An explosion of anti-absolutist sentiments was about to consume the nation. By 1789, France was on the brink of revolutionary abyss, the result of its own ruin. The kingdom was bankrupt, among other factors, due to its support for the American Revolution, and food prices were exorbitant. Even nature seemed to be against the French, sending brutal winters that devastated the crops. France teetered on the edge of the precipice. In this whirlwind, propagandists emerged like demons, pointing their fingers at a specific target, the Queen of France, Marie Antoinette. The attacks against the Queen were fierce and cruel, like an uncontrollable storm of hatred. The popularity of the monarchy collapsed like a house of cards. But her haters were not only outside the palace, within the corridors of Versailles, jealousy burned like embers, fueling xenophobia, she was Austrian, and nurturing resentment against Marie Antoinette. Powerful enemies, such as the Duke of Orléans, plotted dark schemes, giving life to infamous pamphlets that accused her of sexual debauchery and leading the entire nation to financial ruin. Although it is now believed that the Queen's actions did little to provoke the country's collapse, the constant defamatory propaganda against her and the damage inflicted on her image proved to be a catalyst for the revolution to come. The fate of Marie Antoinette and the entire monarchical system was sealed in a tragic collision with the fury of a people hungry for justice and revenge. At the moment, Marie Therese was completely oblivious to the political problems, but she could not escape the family tragedies that would follow. Her sister Sophia, born in 1786, passed away as a baby in 1787, and her second brother, the heir to the throne, had delicate health. He suffered from periodic fevers and, at the age of five, started developing a curvature in his spine due to Potts' disease. Doctors mistakenly diagnosed it as scoliosis and put him in various metal braces, causing serious fractures in two of his vertebrae. He passed away at the age of seven in 1789. Marie Therese, who was already 10 years old, mourned the loss of her siblings and grew very attached to her brother Louis Charles, who became the new Dauphin. In the same year, 1789, the Bastille, a prison in Paris, was stormed by an armed mob thirsty for justice, and tension reached its peak. Marie Therese witnessed her desperate father sending members of the royal family into exile in search of safety. Her uncle, the Count of Artois, and the Duchess of Polignac, her caregiver, were forced to immigrate. The Duchess of Polignac was replaced by Princess Louise Elizabeth de Croix, the Marchioness of Tourzel. Marie Therese remained loyal to Pauline, the daughter of the Marchioness of Tourzel. But the trials were far from over. On October 5th, a march composed mostly of working-class women from Paris, determined to obtain food and fight for their political demands, headed towards Versailles. The invasion of the palace in that fateful dawn forced the royal family to seek refuge in the king's quarters. And under the gaze of the enraged crowd, with the heads of palace guards impaled on spears, they were forced to leave Versailles and move to the Tuileries Palace in Paris. As the political situation rapidly deteriorated, Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette realized that their lives were in imminent danger. Desperate, they followed a risky escape plan orchestrated with the help of Count Axel von Fersen. The goal was to flee to the fortress of Monmedy, a monarchist stronghold in the northeast of the country. However, their hopes were dashed in the town of Varenna when their escape attempt was intercepted, and the royal family was escorted back to Paris, where their safety and fate were now in the merciless hands of the revolution. On August 10, 1792, armed revolutionaries stormed the Tuileries Palace, killing anyone in their path. The royal family managed to seek refuge in the Legislative Assembly. Louis XVI was deposed, the monarchy was abolished, and the First French Republic was proclaimed. On August 13, the royal family was imprisoned in the Temple Tower under extremely deplorable conditions, even worse than those they had faced at the Tuileries. 
Marie Therese witnessed a terrible sight of well-known heads impaled on pikes, including that of Princess Lombal, who was a friend of the family. This cruel scene deeply affected young Marie Therese. The kings tried to maintain calm and not further frighten their children, but one by one, they were called and never returned, all were executed. On January 21, 1793, her father, King Louis XVI, was guillotined. Marie Therese bid him farewell by fainting. In the following days, she became a fundamental support for her mother and her aunt, Elizabeth, her father's sister, who stood by her side throughout this time. Before his departure, Louis XVI made his children promise to forgive their enemies and not seek revenge for his death. The transformation in Marie Therese's life continued. Her younger brother, the young Louis Charles, was recognized by monarchists as Louis XVII of France. However, he was considered a political threat, and almost six months later, on the afternoon of July 3, 1793, several guards forcefully stormed the royal family's apartment amid screams and took him away. He was placed under the care of Antoine Simon, a shoemaker and temple commissioner. From that moment on, the young boy was subjected to all kinds of abuse. The last time Marie Therese sees her brother is during a harsh interrogation, where he is questioningly asked about the sinful relationship between his mother and him. Terrified, the princess could barely believe the words her brother recounted about the alleged abuses he had suffered at the hands of their mother. In the room now, only Queen Maria Antonietta, Marie Therese, and Madame Elizabeth remain. But shortly after, the queen was also taken, tried, and executed on October 16, 1793, without Marie Therese being informed. Now she was under the care of her Aunt Elizabeth, who tried to calm her and advise her on how to survive such cruel circumstances, encouraging her to pray and walk around the small space they were in. On May 9, 1794, another harsh blow for the 15-year-old Marie Therese occurred. Her Aunt Elizabeth was taken to the conciergerie and guillotined the next day. Before being taken away, she pleaded with her niece never to allow the guards to see her in scanty clothing or lying in bed. On May 11, revolutionary leader Robespierre entered Marie Therese's cell. Although no record of the conversation between the politician and the young girl is known, it is known that she handed him a note that read, My brother is sick. I sent a letter to the convention requesting treatment for him, but I have not received any response so far. Robespierre took the note, glanced at the few objects available to the prisoner, and left. The guards, showed great respect for that man who, seemingly coerced by popular pressure, prevented Marie Therese from being executed. She lived there, confined, enduring all forms of humiliation, and undoubtedly suffering abuse from her jailers. Nevertheless, she would dress meticulously every day. Throughout that time, she knew nothing about the fate of her mother and aunt. On the prison walls, she wrote graffiti, Marie Therese Charlotte is the most unhappy person in the world. She can obtain no news of her mother, nor be reunited to her, though she has asked it a thousand times. Live, my good mother, whom I love well, but of whom I can hear no tidings. Oh my father, watch over me from heaven above. Oh my God, forgive those who took my parents' lives. Marie Therese continued to survive in that cold, dark cell, living a genuine hell, constantly fearing that at any moment, they would come for her as well. She had little space, couldn't speak to anyone, something that was completely forbidden, and had only the company of two books, one about Christ and another about travels, which she read repeatedly until she grew tired of them. Her requests for access to more books were denied by the officials, along with other petitions. She had a small ball of yarn and knitting needles that she used to keep herself occupied, but she often heard in horror the cries and screams of her brother Louis Charles when he was beaten, until suddenly one day she stopped hearing him. Young Louis Charles would eventually die in June 1795, a victim of tuberculosis. He, who was only eight years old when he was separated from his mother two years ago, could not withstand the harsh conditions of the prison. After the death of Louis XVII, she was not considered the heir to the French throne due to France's adherence to Salic law, where only males are the rightful heirs. Surely, 
it was this that allowed her to stay alive. Thus, the exiled princes proclaimed Louis Stanislaus, Count of Provence and Marie Therese's paternal uncle, as Louis XVIII, the new king. The war between Austria and France eventually facilitated things for Marie Therese, as there was a possibility of her liberation in exchange for French prisoners held by the Austrian army. She was transferred to a different area of the castle and received new clothes, books, paper, pencils, ink, brushes, and even two dogs. On June 13, 1795, the Committee of Public Safety issued a decree determining that Marie Therese would be a lady-in-waiting. The chosen one was Renée de Chanterin, a 30-year-old woman. This situation brought some joy to the princess, and the two developed a close relationship. Marie Therese affectionately called her Renner, and she encouraged the princess to read aloud to regain the skill lost during the long period of isolation. It was only during this time that Renée revealed the truth about the fate of Marie Therese's loved ones. The princess began to cry, expressing anguish and pain, wishing she had shared the destiny of her parents. From that moment on, the guards were given permission to take her to the garden, where the people could see her. After Dauphin's death, a feeling of sympathy arose for the young princess, considered a victim of the revolution, and she came to be called the Orphan of the Temple. Marie Therese was surprised by the affection shown by the Parisians, who directed kind gestures towards her, dedicated novels, and words of support and encouragement. It was only after the end of the Reign of Terror that Marie Therese was allowed to leave France. After 40 months of confinement, she was released on December 18, 1795, on the eve of her 17th birthday, in exchange for French prisoners, and taken to Vienna, the capital of her cousin, the Holy Roman Emperor Francis II, and also the birthplace of her mother, carrying with her a mix of feelings, happiness for her liberation and sadness at leaving her homeland and deceased parents. She arrived in the Austrian capital on the afternoon of January 9, 1796, after a 22-day journey. In the first months after her release, the princess wore mourning clothes and was deeply saddened. She lived haunted by nightmares and had hysterical episodes when triggered by something that reminded her of her family's terrible experience. Sometimes, she could be heard pacing all night. When she visited Schönbrunn Palace, she walked emotionally through the places where her mother had lived during her childhood. Her stay there was not entirely unpleasant, as it seemed that Marie Therese felt a certain attraction to a cousin, Archduke Charles. Moreover, he seemed to reciprocate her feelings, and there was an affair between the two. It appeared that they would end up marrying. However, her uncle Louis, the future Louis XVIII of France, heard rumors about his niece's flirtation with Archduke Charles. He began exchanging several letters with the young princess, saying that she should marry her paternal cousin, the Duke of Angoulême, Louis Antoine. Louis XVIII deceived his niece, claiming that the marriage was the wish of her parents before they were guillotined. Marie Therese remained undecided. She was indeed in love with Archduke Charles, but on the other hand, she felt obligated to fulfill her supposed parents' wishes. Little did she know that it was all a lie. Since Louis XVIII had no children, he desired a union between his two nephews, as Louis Antoine could one day become the King of France. There was nothing better than marrying Princess Marie Therese. Louis XVIII began sending numerous affectionate letters to his niece, attempting to win her over to his side. Meanwhile, Archduke Charles returned from the battles against Napoleon and gained great popularity, being hailed as a hero. Charles and Marie Therese resumed their flirtation, and Louis XVIII realized that the desired engagement was in jeopardy. Louis Antoine had not yet written to the young princess, so she assumed that the Duke had no interest in her, bringing her even closer to Charles. But Louis XVIII acted swiftly and wrote to his niece, confessing that his cousin Louis Antoine was madly in love with her but, due to his shyness, was unable to write a letter. Marie Therese believed it and finally decided on Louis Antoine simply because she believed it would fulfill her late father's wish. The Austrian imperial family was suspicious of Louis XVIII and refused to let Marie Therese leave the court. Louis XVIII pressured his nephew heavily to send letters to the princess, 
portraying himself as a deeply passionate man eager to have her in his arms. Marie Therese displayed a certain illusion about her future marriage, truly desiring to marry the man who seemed so enamored. Finally, her family allowed her to depart, and Marie Therese traveled to Latvia, where her uncle Louis XVIII had been welcomed by Tsar Paul I of Russia. Upon arriving in Latvia, Marie Therese saw her fiancé for the first time and was immensely disillusioned. He was very insecure, shy, stuttered, and unattractive. It is said that in their first meeting, the Duke did not speak and even shed a few tears, feeling extremely uncomfortable with the situation. Although some claim it was due to emotion. For a moment, Marie Therese regretted not choosing the handsome and brave Charles. Furthermore, there were rumors that Louis Antoine was impotent, but even so, the princess proceeded with the engagement because she believed it was her father's desire. On June 10, 1799, both young individuals married. She was 21 years old, and he was 24. She remained very close to her uncle Louis XVIII, defending him as the heir to the French throne. The princess also appeared very close to her husband, seemingly unconcerned about his flaws. However, she soon realized that the rumors about the Duke's impotence were true and that she could never conceive a child. Other rumors indicate that it was due to her traumas and the horror she endured during imprisonment, with many claiming she was violated by the jailers, preventing the couple from consummating their marriage. Whatever the truth may be, the couple had no children. In 1804, the couple settled in England alongside Louis XVIII. The long years of exile came to an end with Napoleon I's abdication in 1814 and the first restoration of the monarchy, as Louis XVIII ascended the throne of France, 21 years after his brother Louis XVI's death. At that moment, Marie Therese and her husband traveled to French lands. The first thing she did upon arriving in the country was to request that her parents' remains be taken to the Basilica of Saint-Denis for a dignified burial. The princess did not feel at ease in France, sensing that at any moment, she could go through the same fate as her parents, and she often experienced great anguish, fear, and memories of the hell she had lived there. In 1815, Napoleon returned to France, but a large part of the people supported Louis XVIII. However, he immediately left the country out of fear of the monarchy's downfall. Marie Therese and her husband remained in French lands after the defeat in the Battle of Waterloo, Napoleon was definitively removed, and Louis XVIII returned to France and reigned until his death in 1824. Louis XVIII had no children, and Marie Therese's father-in-law was crowned, becoming known as Charles X of France. The princess and her husband then became heirs to the French throne. However, Charles X's decisions were catastrophic. He dissolved the French Parliament and suspended freedom of the press, and anti-monarchist sentiment was once again on the rise. The French people took to the streets, and a revolution erupted in 1830. The king was forced to abdicate in favor of his son, Louis Antoine. In a brief moment of glory, for 20 minutes, Marie Therese and her husband became the kings of France. However, soon after, he, who would go down in history as Louis XIX, also abdicated, as the people and the nobles did not want him as king, they were convinced that if he were crowned, it would be Charles X who would, truly reign in the shadows. Marie Therese and her husband left France and settled in Edinburgh, Scotland, but a few years later, they moved to Prague and then to Gorizia, Slovenia. In 1844, her husband passed away, and Marie Therese deeply felt his loss. She settled in a mansion near Vienna, where she spent her days sewing, praying, and taking walks. Her cousins, Louise and Henry of Bourbon, also established themselves with her in this immense mansion. On October 19, 1851, Marie Therese passed away at the age of 72 due to pneumonia. Her remains rest in the Franciscan Monastery of Kostanjevica in Slovenia. It is said that one of Marie Therese's greatest sorrows throughout her life was not being able to have children. However, it is recounted that the couple adopted two twin girls abandoned in a church, named Eloise and Sabrina. These girls were said to have brought joy to Marie Therese's life, 
and she was always attentive and affectionate towards them, considering them her own daughters. After Marie Therese's death, the twins practically disappeared from history, as if they had never existed. Marie Therese of France was the only member of the French royal family who, despite being imprisoned by the revolutionaries, managed to leave France alive. But she had to carry with her the burden of an existence filled with tragedies and adversities. She witnessed the fall of the monarchy, suffered the execution of her parents, and the horrors in that fortress that we can neither imagine nor conceive. A forgotten princess whose story reminds us that true nobility lies in how we face life's challenges.